Welcome to Brians at the Gate. This is our video blog for March 18th, 2019. Gentlemen, how are you doing? Right. Doing well. It's been a couple of weeks since we've been together. We've had spring breaks. We've had other kinds of things going on. So welcome back to both of you. Welcome back to all of our uh, viewers and listeners. Quite a bit going on in the world. Uh, we've had Donald Trump exercise his first veto of his presidency. Uh, anything jump out at you from that, Bert or Jeff, either one? I think it was healthy for a, a, a fair segment of the Republicans to uh, stand against him in this particular issue, uh, given the, the background of it and the fact that Congress had recently spoken. Uh, as I have argued before, independent on whether we think that, that, that we should do something different at the border, I think it's uh, particularly uh, healthy for us to have a, a non-impure uh, um, not non uh, president has dictatorial power right. to just sure. do whatever they want. I mean, we ha we have a constitution, right. and they should follow the con constitutional uh, practices. So I think a, a rebuke, even though he'll, I, I believe he'll successfully. Oh yeah, go there's no way it's going to be overridden. Yeah. Right. So right. so, uh, but I think that was healthy. Uh, Bert, what do you think? Well, I guess uh, Ben Sass backing away surprised me. Yep. Uh, I would have expected Trump to veto. Yep. Uh, but that uh, I thought that it was on the horizon that we might have had a man of principle out there, and I suppose we still might, but here he, he backtracked and ran the other way. In fact, I think the only uh, Republican that voted uh, essentially with the Democrats that was not facing re-election is maybe... Susan Collins. Yeah, I believe yeah. Maine. I think that's, that's right, correct. Susan yeah. Collins. So, yeah, so I mean, this is just basic politician behavior, and I can't, uh, it's going to, might uh, give me some trouble being re-elected, so I've said this is wrong. I said I believe in the Constitution. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> so that 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 I don't like. But uh, uh, the that's, one that's the most embarrassing one is uh, Tom Tillis from North Carolina. He wrote an op-ed in the Washington Post just a couple of weeks ago, saying this is overreach. I have an Article One obligation. Just because he's a Republican doesn't make it right. And then he uh, flip-flopped at the moment of truth and decided to vote with the president. So he's running for re-election, as mm -hmm. you said. I think we were looking at just basic politics here. Um, I, I th no, for none of us is this really a big surprise that politicians actually act like politicians. Mm -hmm. But I hope for people who aren't familiar with this, that they you know, have a little bit of a wake up call. You know, parties are flexible, politicians are flexible, mm -hmm. principles if they exist are flexible for these politicians. Frequently, it's hard to look at sort of a rock hard principle mm -hmm. in the Republican Party right now and say this is what they're for, no matter what. I just I just don't really see that now. Well, it's the principle of Trump. I was going to say, is that is that really where we are, you think, Bert? I do, yes. I think that uh, by and large, uh, the Republican Party now forms itself around uh, Master Tweet, and that's that's the way I, I see it right now. <laughs> Master Tweet? Is that, you know. <laughs> Jeff, what do you think? Well, I think at, at one level, I'm a, always a little bit more willing to uh, give the politicians some leeway when they're doing things that I don't think that they should do on good principle, if they're at least... Uh, doing it in response to constituent pressures. We, we are in a, a democratic republic, so, so that I give them a little bit more more uh, um, bounds to, to maneuver that direction. Sure. What really makes me angry, of course, is when they do what's unconstitutional, which everybody's against them doing, but they don't care for their very small minority agenda. And this place, like Tom Tillis, as you mentioned, I mean, there's pretty clear, his base wants him to do yeah, what right. he, they wanted him to flip. So, sure. so yeah. I think I'm willing to give him a little bit more room in that regard. And given Trump's approval rating, I yeah. think you're probably, probably right about that. Bert, we going to follow it up? Uh, no, I would, I would not disagree with you. I, I think this is basic political behavior. Again, it's still... Uh, just disappoints me with Ben Sass is all. Yeah. I, 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 yeah. don't, I don't know the other guy as well, yeah. but yeah. And I, maybe it shouldn't surprise me. Ted Cruz also backed away from any kind of criticism he had had, mm -hmm. which is disappointing. I think, um, Marco Rubio voted against the president. Mike Lee voted against the president. Of course, Mitt Romney voted against the president. Um, I could be wrong. Maybe it's just my own true colors coming out. I think Marco Rubio probably has a good future ahead of him. He's sort of come out of this thing reelected in 2016, Still seen as relatively conservative. I think post-Trump Republicans, Rubio may be the guy. We'll see, though. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, let's talk about Democrats for 2020. Uh, they keep announcing, and, you know, we thought the Republican field was big last time. Democratic field looked like, looks like it's going to be just as big or bigger than that field. Um, Beto O'Rourke was the most recent uh, announcement. What do you guys think about Beto, Beto's chances? How does he fit into the field? Does he have a good shot? I mean, Bert, do you have any inkling? I don't think he has a very good shot. 
uh, it's amazing the amount of money that he uh, raised initially. Yeah. If yep. he has an ability to do that, he must have a group of people that uh, support him. Yep. But uh, these guys, to me, all just sort of clump in the center. And, you know, I, I don't see how you're going to have, uh, well, I don't mean the center politically. Yeah, I mean, they're, they're all the same. They just yeah. seem to be they're indistinguishable. Very, very, yeah, very, okay. like almost the same people. They just you know, might, might represent uh, you know, a, a different uh, identity a little bit, but they, they seem to say things that are very, very similar. You know, it'll have to be whittled down some for them to actually campaign against each other and right. for it to be rational. Yeah. Uh, so how that happens, uh, I, I don't know, because to me they look like uh, just the, the group that will give us a Republican president for another four years. Uh, it's hard to imagine anything different right now. Jeff, what do you think? I think that uh, um, Beto O'Rourke is very interesting because it's clear that he's trying to stake a claim on the Democratic side of one of optimism uh, to be not perceived as one of the crazies, right. and yet he's forced because of the very process to kind of adopt all their positions, but it's really tough for him. Am I, am I for this or against this? But how can I be for all these crazy positions and still sound like I'm moderate? But he clearly, I believe, thinks that there's a pathway for someone that takes that position. He wants to be the heir of, of like a, a positive Mr. Obama. And right now, Mr. Obama would be, let's face it, he would be right wing in the Democratic yeah, Party. He would. And so, so that's kind of the, the, the uh, position he wants to take. So I think there's more room for Beta O'Rourke than for some of these other candidates. I don't think he's just like the rest, even though he's going to have to, get through the primary process, adopt most of their positions. But he has had some more conservative positions in the past. I suspect he's going to try to carve out and at least posture himself as, as a more reasonable person. Uh, but, and how does he f walk that line in the primary? Uh, you know, Richard Nixon was famously, of course, said, yep, you know, yep. you got to go as far right as you can to get through the <clears> primary. <throat> and as soon as you get through that, run straight to the center. Uh, I'm not sure how he does it, but that's where I believe where he wants to go. You're the political uh, guy. Yeah, what do you think? I, uh, Beto's been a little bit of a mystery to me since he ran against Ted Cruz, honestly. I mean, I don't, as a House member, he was pretty indistinguishable, didn't do a lot that was really noteworthy. As a Senate candidate, he was an interesting image. I'm not sure there's a lot else going on there. Um, as a presidential candidate, his resume looks pretty thin to me to be a credible presidential candidate, but... Obviously, that's not stopping anyone from running these days. Uh, it's uh, it, it's interesting. I, I don't, I'm trying to wrestle with him as an image. You know, what image is he project, projecting the electorate in a way that could get him elected? He's in his mid 40s, but he sort of tries to present himself as a millennial almost in some ways. He's riding skateboards. He's wearing certain kinds of clothes. Mm -hmm. I he, I'm not his target demographic clearly, mm -hmm. but I don't know how this works. I just don't know how. It feels. Um, it. I, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. I know what authentic Beto is. Does that make sense? Well, well let me. There's like, a guy like Joe Biden. Yeah. I think Joe Biden's pretty much what you see is what you, what get. you get. He's kind yeah, of. Sure. Sure. It's just that guy. He's kind of loose cannon, <laughs> whatever. But it's Joe Biden. Nothing surprising yeah. there. I don't know. Well, let me throw some. I mean, yeah. Have you sure. comment on it? Yeah. So, so uh, you know, Beto a few days ago said, "I'm a capitalist." <clears throat> Right. And uh, and uh, trying to contrast and pr pr uh, make himself not yeah. like the rest that are embracing socialism. Right. Well, we, we saw uh, uh, the former uh, uh, vice chairman of the Fed, Alan Blinder, tell all the Democratic candidates, stop saying you're a socialist uh, in, a, in a journal op-ed. And in and, and reality, because all you really care about is a big welfare state, you're just like kind of the normal Democrat. You're, you're playing into the, the, the Republicans' plan and so forth. Well, he's, he's kind of would have the ability to potentially attract the old line Democrat of the Allen blinders and that type. Is there enough of them if all of the energy in the base is split amongst small parts? That's what I think he's trying to do. But you That's a fair question. It's just I don't know if there's enough. There's a lot of money in that sector, the Democratic Party. Yes. No question about that. Is there enough passion, enough energy, enough um, grassroots activism? You know, that's not sort of a Twitter candidacy. Obviously, but you're talking about a different sort of old school candidacy. Yeah, I just, I mean, I. Well, it feels like Barack Obama broke the rule there. If he was going to do that, I mean, if that, for that person, why not Biden for, for that role? Well, it's it's uh, you know he doesn't we're, want to we're, we're, not. we're not allowed to age discriminate, but I guarantee you the voters <laughs> will. And I sure. think there's a there's a feeling that that generation's time has passed, certainly in the in the mm -hmm. Democratic Party. And I think even the the blinders don't want to get a Joe unless they thought 
that was the only way. I think they would rather find somebody younger that could appeal to their base and try to bring it together. Jeff, let me uh, ask you this. Mm-hmm. So what, what if the Democrats pursue the policy that they're pursuing now, mm-hmm. going hard left, and then the nominee comes back to the center? Do you think that could be a threat uh, to a second-term Trump presidency? Mm, it's going to be real hard for any of them to come back to the center with, without at least trying to do this Beto yeah, thing. Yeah, right, I, right, right. I, I, they're, they're not leaving themselves much rhetorical mm-hmm. space. space yeah. yeah, it's just they're using really harsh, sharp language. They're, they're carrying very broad labels. I just don't know how you get away now, from let, this. Let me argue this. Yeah, go so ahead, go ahead. If, if you've got the, uh, the demographic that we're talking mm-hmm. about, attention span and memory may not be very long. So whereas I might listen to someone say, I'm a socialist, I want this, that, and the other, and it may stick with me, it may not uh, nearly as heavily uh, as uh, with, with, with a millennial as it would with, uh, you know, with, with, with me. Uh, with you guys too, they may, might just not remember. Everything is so fast. Everything is so turbulent. Everything is turning over so quickly mm-hmm. now. So there may be some uh, method to the madness. Uh, I don't think so, though. Again, I just think it's and some of this is going to depend on Donald Trump too, right? I mean, if yeah, he keeps sure. it together over the next year and a half, which is a big if. Um, well, but let me talk about what he's done yeah. well. I mean, yeah. politically. I mean, I, I I like some of the things Mr. Trump done. I don't dislike other things, but he has been very very good at assiduously working the people he believes got him elected. No doubt. He has, he has worked hard to make sure everything I care about as a conservative Christian, yeah. he's been very supportive. Yeah. Uh, you know, I, I might not like it, but he leaning even this weekend with his tweets on Lordstown and the auto uh, plan up there, the, he's consistently telling that message. I realize America is, is broken and, and the American dream is dead for a lot of you, and I'm fighting for you. So he wants to win Wisconsin and Michigan and Pennsylvania yeah, again. Yeah. So, so, so he he has not made mistakes in those areas, at least in my, my estimation. But your thoughts? No, I mean, I, I agree with you. I think he's done a very good job at keeping his base strongly behind him. I, I just have to think, and I could be wrong, right? Well, I think we were all wrong in 2016. I have to think to win in 2020, he has to expand that base a little bit. He's done nothing to really try to build out from that base, at least not very effectively. He may think that's enough. And yeah. he may be right, right? It won him in 2016. If he can keep that same support in 2020, that may be just enough, especially the Democrats nominate an Elizabeth Warren or a Bernie Sanders. And what if the economy is still doing as well as it is today? Right. No, I th- it's, a, it's a credible argument. And they're argument. P- putting someone out that threatens that <clears throat> prosperity. I still think the big uh, wild card with Trump is an, an international emergency of some kind. I just don't. He's been so fortunate so far with world events that nothing has truly happened to bring him into a leadership position internationally, which is really, I think, where his shortcomings would show up. Right, Bert, what do you think? Last well, word do, well, what I would say is with that, I think he's going to have enough people around him that even if he says something, we as a nation will not do anything uh, too stupid in, in the international <laughs> arena. I think that's what's happened to him that's, now, is that, that the uh, institutions that we have have restrained him, yeah. and that's why he has been as successful uh, as, as he has. You know, I would think, you, you, know, you talk about what he's done mm-hmm. good and what mm-hmm. he's supported sure. for the base. I agree with you that things that uh, Christians are interested in, he is. I don't know, wouldn't say been ideal, but certainly been very good. Uh, if you look at what he's done with immigration and the wall, I don't mm-hmm. think he's been very successful on that, no, and that was no. his primary, yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, primary uh, issue. So, yeah. but he's maintained the appearance of fighting for it. Now, I don't find it persuasive. A lot yeah. of people would. So, well, maybe I think he kind of started fighting for it right. again and kind of let it slide way too long right. to be successful. Right. But, but I love your 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 phrase there. That should be our new slogan as a country. We won't do anything too stupid. That's good. I like it. It's very good. Sounds like a a winning uh, slogan for 2020 for Mr. Trump. So anyway, thank you for joining us. Uh, Thanks as always, guys. Good time to talk with you. uh, And we will see you soon. Thank you.